Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're, we are going to give it another 30 seconds or so, maybe even a minute, uh, and start at the top of the hour. Just want to let people have enough time to join in with us. And for the record, this is a Firebytes you will not want to miss. Johan is definitely right. And we also have uh, Russell Lindsay, our SE from the Southwest, waiting in the wings. He's off camera right now, but he is on and he'll be helping me moderate the live Q&A and perhaps some special uh, special trivia throughout throughout today's webinar. So definitely don't want to miss and you want to pay attention. All right, looks like we can kick things off here. So I do wanna remind everyone today, we are all in listen-only mode, and that is really just to um, keep the background noise uh, down for everyone so we can all enjoy a, a clear webinar and, and um, be able to understand what's, what's happening throughout. Uh, we do encourage you, however, to submit feedbacks uh, and questions in the Q&A panel or in the chat panel. And again, like I said, Russell and I will be behind the scenes uh, moderating those questions. Uh, if we don't get a chance to uh, touch base with your question live during today's webinar, we will reach out to you afterwards and, and follow up with you. And just lastly, um, just to reiterate what we said in the beginning, this is a Firebytes you don't want to miss. Not only do we have some fun stuff planned uh, it, during the webinar, but um, also we have uh, four $50 gift cards of your choice available. Must be present to win. So one will be uh, given away during the webinar. Just leave it at that. So definitely pay attention. And three will be random draw at the end of the webinar. And then definitely stay tuned. We've got an exclusive promotion for both WatchGuard One partners and uh, customers um, that Johan will be talking about. And then we also have a preview of our December Firebite session, which is going to be pretty fun. Um, all right. Without further ado, <laughs> Johan is waiting to take over. Johan is our uh, WatchGuard sales engineer for WatchGuard West and also our virtual CTO. Without further ado, Johan, please take it away. Thank you so much, Wendy. Welcome today to today's session of Firebytes. As Wendy mentioned, this is going to be an exciting edition. I believe it's one of a kind. Wendy can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's definitely the first of its kind, uh, and you'll find out by the end. You'll definitely want to be by your keyboards. We're really trying to encourage and ramp up the um, participation of our audience members. So as Wendy mentioned in today's session, we're going to be giving away four $50 gift cards to the um, your choice. We have a, a nice little website that Wendy has set up that you can choose which um, area or which store you want your $50 gift card to go to. We have some exciting giveaways and as always, some exciting content. So today's session, we're gonna be primarily focusing around the new MX90 hardware, the new Fireboxes out there. But before we get into that, I wanted to cover, I don't know if um, you guys are keeping up with what we call the Internet Security Report. That's by our very own Corey Nockreiner at the um, Research Labs. But basically, I wanted to cover some of the stats in there real quick. I did uh, drop a bit.ly link down there at the bottom. So bit.ly um, forward slash watchguard or WGISR Q2 2021, if you want to grab a picture of that. But basically, I wanted to cover some stats that I feel as a uh, network administrator working in network security right now is uh, very important for us. So as we look at the uh, detections, right, we're seeing this number going over, up and up of encryption, um, encrypted connections. And unfortunately, you know, more and more malware is dropping down over an encrypted connection. In fact, 91.5 uh, rounding, 91.5% of malware detections are arriving over an encrypted connection. Now, some of you have had maybe some um, varied success in doing content inspection. As a reminder, WatchGuard includes that ability out of the box. It does have some complications. I do have some YouTube videos on our channel, WatchGuard West, youtube.com forward slash WatchGuard West, on how your best um, chances of success with that. And ultimately, 
you know, it comes down to we have that uh, proxy exceptions or certificate exceptions for that. That one, by the way, at uh, 12.7 release also includes the ability to auto update those exceptions. So that's going to make it easier. However, we're also seeing that people are um, shifting gears a little bit. And rather than trying to do content inspection on the firewall, which I still recommend doing content inspection on the firewall, but they are looking at shoring up the endpoints. And certainly with our EPDR, our acquisition of Panda, a 30 year old company, we're having great success with establishing that zero trust or 100% attestation environment. Now, my wife oftentimes reminds me, well, make sure that people know what you're talking about. So when we talk about a zero trust environment, we're actually saying no files or applications will be allowed to execute, whether they're fileless malware, unless they have been known proven good. And we'll have a future session on that in our Firebytes. So feel free to stay tuned, keep your eye or your ears open for that. Or you can reach out to Russell and I, and we can certainly set up a demo of our EPDR in WatchGuard Cloud. Now, moving on, 61% of malware was zero day. So one of the important things that um, people are neglecting these days, they might have had WSUS, uh, that's your Microsoft Update Services, running. However, the requirement um, or it requires computers to be on the same um, network as your server. So with uh, this dispersed work uh, force due to COVID, a lot of people are not working from their network anymore. And unfortunately, they're not getting updates. We do offer updates um, as a module within EPDR. So feel free to reach out to us as well for that. 35% of malware was known malware. And again, we're going to be covering that on a variety of ways on the Firebox through AVG, Intelligent AV, and then APT Blocker, which is our sandboxing solution. So as we look at the malware trends out here, I think it's uh, extremely important to understand what's going on behind the scenes of uh, cybersecurity. So we do, uh, um, or we did include the feature that your Firebox can send these stats back to our threat labs. And it's important to do that because we can um, for, use these stats to further determine where to focus our security efforts on. So if you haven't um, checked out how to enroll that, obviously it's not uh, sending any sensitive data, but it's going to allow us to uh, see how many uh, signatures um, have been activated, how many blocks, et cetera. So from the Firebox feed, it recorded threat data from 37,000, over 37,000 participating Fireboxes. And again, please go into your Firebox configuration and see if you can add to that number and increase it because it's just going to help us um, with in our insight into what threats are out there. Our gateway antivirus service blocked over nine and a half million malware variants. Traditional AV increased by 10% quarter over quarter. When we look at the value of APT Blocker, right? Almost 7 million um, threats that APT Blocker detected and blocked in that case. And then we have Intelligent AV, 34,000 um, blocks or detections dropped. And it, again, that encrypted connections was over 91%. Um, percent of all connections that the malware uh, was arriving over that encrypted connection. All right, so if we look at the top gateway antivirus malware, right? So we had over 1 million accounts uh, of Win32, that's a Win code injection, which basically is a fileless um, technique. And again, we are going to be blocking that from APT blocker, as well as it's um, important to block that on the endpoint as well. You can see the other threats through there, office exploits, win code injection, dropper files. And those dropper files are so important to have that endpoint protection because it might be benign. It drops in um, through, the um, comes in over the firebox. And let's say there's not anything malicious about that dropper file. However, then it reaches out. Oftentimes we see it in an encrypted format to drop in that payload. Um, and access the command and control traffic through there. So breaking it down, I know the report is a lot of information. I brought some of the top tips of that uh, WatchGuard threat report and put it in a Johan's summary top tips in there. So number one, do not pay the ransom, right? We see a number of cases where um, people have paid the ransom, either they don't receive the uh, unlock key, perhaps in the meantime of when they actually tried to pay it, the um, FBI, 
took over the operation, shut it down, so you're not able to get the recovery key back. However, the most important thing is to create and test your disaster recovery plan, otherwise known as your BCDR, Backup Continuity and Disaster Recovery Plan. Clean your attack surface, right? We saw a lot of attacks go, come into exchange. We see a lot of attacks, continued attacks coming to RDP. And in fact, um, with our latest EPDR, we now include the option of indicators of attack. And we can, if you look at the MITRE framework or you're familiar with the MITRE framework, we can block elements of the MITRE framework uh, as it applies to your endpoint data or your endpoints. Regularly audit those exposed services or resources. So we tell you, um, you've oftentimes heard from um, myself, from Russell, to go through and audit, maybe start your firewall configuration from scratch so you know what's there. Unfortunately, a number of cases have um, happened where maybe you step into a new role at your organization and they have a 30, or sorry, not a 30, but maybe a 15 year old configuration on their firewall and it's uh, very convoluted. Why not spend the time to clean that up, find out what's going on in there or perhaps just start from scratch and that's going to be your best bet as a reminder rdp ssh should be moved behind a vpn or access portal now as a reminder we do have the WatchGuard access portal that you can securely um, publish those resources uh, from behind protect your endpoints again you're going to hear a large emphasis or large um, focus from russell and i on focusing on those endpoints get the um, EPP endpoint protection platform, as well as EPDR, so you can establish that zero trust environment. As a reminder, EPDR does stop those exploits, those fileless malware out there. And then, as I mentioned previously as well, patch management. That's a big one that people have neglected to focus on these days. As they looked at, um, you know, prior to COVID, we had WSUS services updating all of their workstations. However, people are moving off site, what are you doing for your patch management? As well as uh, patch management module from EPDR also includes the ability not only for Windows patches, Office patches, but also hundreds of third-party uh, software as well from there. So if you're concerned about keeping your client's Zoom um, software up to date, you can look to patch management for that, also encryption management and protect your accounts, right? That's one of the easiest ways and we're um, having more and more conversation these days from cyber insurance companies. Um, we saw the uh, cyber executive order from the government saying establish a zero trust and establish multi-factor authentication wherever you can. And with AuthPoint, it's never been easier to configure and manage your MFA deployment right from WatchGuard Cloud. So use MFA to level up your accounts. Now, before we get started, I did want to bring your attention as well to our WatchGuard end of life um, policy. So as we look at this, you have your product in the left hand side here, and then you have your end of sale, end of life and your migration path. Now, you'll notice there's a big um, window between your end of sale. So this is when it will uh, stop being sold. And traditionally, you see a five year um, window from there that it's going to be end of life. We do have the migration path. Now, this is all available online. You can see you can hyperlink and I have the bit.ly link coming up. But ultimately, what I wanted to bring your attention to, we do have, um, as an example, uh, T35s, T10s, 270s, and you can see the migration paths for those. Here we have the next slide of those, the T50s highlight. Um, we have the XTM 25s, 33s, and you can see, I don't, for the sake of time, want to read through all of those, but you can grab that on the bit.ly link, watchguard-eol end of life. Now, get ready, everyone. This um, is our first $50 giveaway coming up. The first one that can translate this lead speak and put it in the questions pane is the winner of our $50 um, dollar gift card. Now, I do have um, a number of uh, chats coming in already. So again, translate this lead speak at the top, submitted through the questions pane. I see Kevin submitted some um, uh, chat there. Great to hear from you, Kevin. We have um, someone, uh, unfortunately, that's not the correct one, Thomas. Any takers? Quick to elite speak translator. 
please provide links in the chat. So we will, Russell, are you able to, as I go through there, copy those um, bit.ly links and paste them in the chat? All right, have no clue, any takers? Okay, let's break this down, guys. We can do better than this, okay? So we see dollar sign, what's the dollar sign for, S? All right, I know this is level three lead speak, but we can do it. What is this, you think, a U? And then we have a slash and two, which would be an R. Adam, yes, you got it. Great job. Adam, um, Wendy, are you able to note that Adam is the first one to successfully put in Leet Speak translation? It is surprise, everyone. All right, so this is our first surprise that we have. And what is the surprise? It is a promo for WatchGuard Watch Card One, a partner promo. Don't worry if you're not a WatchGuard One partner, we have something for you as well. So what is the promo? Get a free Wi-Fi 6 NFR by November 15th. Receive, so you get a free Wi-Fi 6 NFR and you can receive a $20 gift card of your choice. How do you win that? It's valid for technicians and engineers of WatchGuard One, certified partners, levels, silver, gold, and platinum. Send those requests to firebytes at watchguard.com. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this. This is our new AP right here. So that is a Wi-Fi 6. Don't want to give away too much because we're going to have a future uh, Firebyte session on that. So stay tuned. We will have a, a future Firebyte session for that. Now, we do have a, something for the end users as well. So even if you're not a WatchGuard 1 partner, request a Wi-Fi 6 demo by November 15th. Again, by sending an email to firebytes at watchguard.com and you'll receive a $20 gift card of your choice. So hopefully that livens things up a little bit there for you guys. And um, now for the main attraction. All right, so bringing it around, getting back to the focus or task at hand, Firebox M290. This one has 700 megabits per second, HTTP and HTTP, or HTTPS and IPS right there. One of the biggest uh, differences you'll notice out of the gate is that we have expansion bays on all of all four of these um, products. In the expansion bay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, we have four one gig copper, four SFP, two SFP plus, or four multi-speed. Now that's 100% as comparison to the M370. This is bringing the M390 to the table at 1.3 gigabits per second. Same expansion bay options on that one. Now the 590 introduces something um, special here. We have two 10 gig SFP plus ports right from here and the ability now to do expansion pay. So previously as um, the previous models, now we can have multi-speed PoE plus. Why is that? We actually have um, a PoE plus power adapter option that is available on the 590 and 690 that is not available on the, the um, 290 or 390. I'll cover that here shortly. M690 introduces now, but wait, there's more. We have the uh, two 10 gigabits um, per second SFP plus, as well as two 10 gigabits per second multi-speed ports on there, as well as the expansion bay, um, the four options. And I'll cover those in detail here. Uh, momentarily. So as I mentioned, uh, 590 and 690 include the option of a um, dedicated power supply. So if you have a T70 power supply, this is going to be the same, or you can order that very um, um, cheap on our uh, price list. Feel free to grab that. That's going to give you a PUE plus um, injection on those ports. Now, the other thing that I oftentimes hear as well is redundant power supplies, right? So these do have redundant power supplies on there. They're not hot swappable, but you can uh, use both of them in the event that you had a power supply failure. All right, If as we look at the modularity for MX90, um, the modules for that, again, a little bit more in depth, we have four one gig copper ports on here. We have four SFP modules, two SFP plus, or for multi-speed PoE plus. Now the, the um, 
caveat on there is that PoE Plus does require, as I mentioned, that ad additional power supply. Now, if you had maybe a 4800 module or another previous generation, they're not compatible with the MX90 series. So as we look at the security offerings on there, right? So we have three options. Most of you know about this. We have our support only, which I wouldn't um, suggest. We have our basic security, or what I would highly suggest is our total security. Now, why would I suggest that? For a variety of reasons, right? When we talked about zero day um, malware coming out there or coming across the network, APT blocker is going to be your strongest line of defense for that. We have TDR, which is our endpoint um, detection and response. That is for host ransomware prevention. Many of you might have seen my hack on where I uh, have crafted that Excel file to drop in the payload and automatically execute that ransomware. That's going to uh, protect against that. We have our DNS watch. It's blocking a domain name, domain level lookups. And then we have Intelligent AV, uh, which is through Silence. But most importantly, or one of the high priorities in my mind, is the ability to do 30 days of data retention within WatchGuard Cloud. Now, keep in mind, we are um, increasing the features of WatchGuard Cloud on a daily basis. So if you haven't checked out, we do have WatchGuard Firebox management, um, uh, new developments on there. Feel free to reach out to Russell and I, and we can give you an overview of the new features in WatchGuard Cloud. So it is consistent with the M4800, 5800, T40, and T80. We do include the access portal. So again, that's going to be a great way to secure your RDP SSH connections if you didn't want a VPN connection. Now, we do have, obviously, IPsec and SSL VPN support. As a side note, DLP is no longer available. If you do have DLP, the support is through August, 2023. And then total security suite for zero day malware prevention. Now, as we look at the specifications of that, just the matrix view, and if you haven't heard me say that before, WatchGuard has very few um, hard limits on our firewalls, right? So when we say recommended users, what happens if you have 90 users on your 290? No worries, that's not going to hit a hard limit on there. So this is just our recommended user count for our 290. So 75 users, 390 comes in around uh, 250 users, 590, 500, 690 is around 850. And obviously we have our higher end fire boxes as well, if you need to go more than that. Content inspection, um, rate numbers. Now, as I mentioned, we do have a few hard limits. That's gonna be branch of VPN, 75, um counts instances on there on uh branch of vpn we have 75 mobile users available through there you cannot increase many of you that have been longtime watch card customers recognize um in the past we used to have an option that you could purchase and increase this that is not an option anymore so if you needed more than 75 the recommendation would be to level up onto the m390 now i'll take this moment many of you um, may have noticed we have gone from the 390 to the 590, whereas there used to be a 470. We uh, looked at our sales on the 470, and we've simply um, increased the 390 and decreased the requirements of the 590, pushed those together. And um, so now there's not an option for the 490. It wasn't um, the strongest um, or it wasn't the most popular. So we've simply merged those into 390 and 590. Concurrent connection and connections per second, those are hard limits as well, but uh, those current connections, good luck hitting uh, 3.5 million on those concurrent connections. And to make everything easier for you, we do have the WatchGuard sizing tool, appliance sizing tool. Here's the bit.ly link for that, um, bit.ly forward slash WG hyphen sizing. What you do is um, when you come to this webpage, you put in information about your environment. Now, all you have to do is put in the number of users if you wanted to. In this case, I put in 250 and it recommends the 390. You could also put in your recommended throughput um, on your um, uh, internet ISP connection. So I put one gig on there, how many internet or network interfaces are required. That's also going to give you the module um, as well, or how many VPN. So you can say CR solution, reset your environment. That's gonna reset the calculator. So feel free to try that out as well. All right.
And Wendy, did you want to take over our Firebytes Wheel of Firebytes? All right. I'll speak to I'll go ahead and speak to that. So exciting Wheel of Firebytes. That is our December game show. Many of you have been uh, longtime subscribers of Firebytes. You've um, subscribed to our YouTube channel. We're extremely grateful for that. And we want to take a chance to reward you. So join us on December 9th. We're going to have some fun Kahoots trivia on previous Firebytes over the year. You'll have a chance to spin the prize wheel. The prize is galore. So um, I'm not going to lie, guys. I've had my eye on this solo stove for a number of years now, um, a couple of years. This thing is phenomenal. I went to my buddy's house. Um, not only is it easy to start a fire within the solo stove, but there is no smoke within it. So very cool prize. I don't know what I have to do to get one from Wendy, but um, <laughs> for you guys, definitely join us on December 9th. Uh, I did hear Wendy back on. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that, folks. I was on double mute. But as Johan said, he 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 gave it all the credit that that's due. We want to reward you for um, following along with us, attending every month, watching our online videos uh, on our YouTube channel. So December 9th is going to be all about you. We'll do uh, a couple of different Kahoot trivia sessions, which are really fun if you haven't haven't played before. Super simple, but definitely, you know, bring all of your watch guard trivia prowess with you. It's your turn to to sort of show us what you've learned. We will have uh, prize wheel spinning, so there'll be a live action prize wheel, uh, multiple times, multiple prizes to win. Um, yeah, so definitely join us. Um, and get ready for that trivia session. We do have one more session of, of Fire Bites before the December 9th, but we wanna make sure that you guys know what we're planning for you guys and, and uh, you mark that off in your calendar uh, for a, a 30 minute, just fun appreciation event um, for all of you attendees. And rumor has it that Russell and I might actually dress up if Wendy maybe gives me that solo stove. I might dress up um, <laughs> some festive outfit on there. So it's an episode you will not want to miss. But with that, as Wendy did mention, the next Firebytes is on WatchGuard cloud-controlled Wi-Fi 6. So without going too much into it, again, this is our new Wi-Fi 6 access point. I've been running it. It's one of the perks of being a WatchGuard employee, get early access. And a number of you are our WatchGuard one partners and you're enrolled in our beta program, you've had access to it as well. So thank you so much for all of you guys. But as a reminder, we do wanna thank you everyone for joining us today. Please fill out the survey. We have the QR code um, link there so you can scan your phone, grab that link. Um, but I did see a number of questions. Will this be posted? We will uh, put this on YouTube as well. And let me see if there's any other questions that we can get to. Doug says, in California, we have enough fires. Yes, unfortunately, I do live in um, Oregon. And unfortunately, we have fires as well. Um, however, in the fall right now, with the rain coming down, this is the perfect time to grab a drink, have a bonfire, have your friends over. Um, so Keith does say, will the recording be available later on? Yes, we will post that. And a number of you put in about the elite speak generator translation. Now, Carrie says, um, I will reach out to Carrie Wagner. Uh, please do send in your email address, Carrie. We will reach out, um, Russell and I, and talk to you about the benefits of the WatchGuard One Partner Program. Excellent. I think we have gotten all the way through all of the questions. We have two more minutes. We can, any other questions? I see Gary, and I we appreciate also, that. And sorry to interrupt, Johan, we also have um, our winners of today's uh, $50 gift card. So as the questions are coming in, um, I just wanted to remind everyone, if you wanted to uh, take advantage of the Firebytes exclusive promo that Johan mentioned um, for the Wi-Fi 6 either demo if you're a customer or uh, NFR if you're a partner or a reseller, um, please do email us at firebytes at watchguard.com. 
that is a special promo. Um, you request either the demo or the NFR, and you also get a $20 gift card of your choice. So while we're filtering in some more questions, I'm going to go ahead and answer or um, share the winners of, of today's gift cards. And actually, we were feeling a little bit generous. Um, so we, we added uh, an additional gift card. So Adam S., um, he won the um, surprise code slide uh, during the webinar. So congratulations, Adam S., for being sharp and on the keyboard for that. We also have the next winners. So we have Zach from FOH Productions. We have Kevin C. and Keith S., as well as, did I say Thomas H., as well? So we've got five total winners. Um, I will reach out to you later today with your link to go redeem your, your gift card. It will come from watchguard at ribbon.net. And ribbon is spelled R-Y-B-B-O-N. So it is, it is not spelled um, traditionally, um, but be on the lookout for that link. And then you will be able to pick the gift card of your choice for $50. So again, thanks for joining us. Any more Q and A you you guys want to jump to? Yeah, there was one question I just wanted to ver. Um, so Alp sent in a question: Do all attending partners get NFR AP? So just to reiterate on that, um, so if you are a silver, gold, or platinum uh, partner, or you're a technician with a silver, gold, and uh, platinum partner, reach out. We will give you a free uh, Wi-Fi six access point. Uh, so you can use that. And again, I threw that Firebytes uh, email in the chat. And also, if you are an end user and you want to take a look at uh, Wi-Fi 6 as managed by WatchGuard Cloud, feel free to send an email to that for your um, your demo as well as your $20 gift card. Excellent. I love the input you guys are sending in thomas says keep the fire in the container in your drinking hand absolutely right now i'm drinking a coffee this is our yeti container which you guys will have the chance to win in december so with that i think we are at the top of the hour thanks so much everyone feel free to join us on our next session wi-fi 6 watch guard cloud controlled access points so see you next time everyone and thanks so much for your participation